What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. This is going to be my long return into the discography of the band Oasis. Now, I am going to be doing a re-review of this album because I was not really happy and satisfied with the turnout. So, I'm going to talk about the band's fourth studio album once again into this review. The band's next album after Be Here Now entitled Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. Standing on the Shoulder of Giants is the band's fourth studio album. It came out on the 28th of February 2000. This is the follow-up to the 1997 smash hit of an album, Be Here Now, which became the band's biggest selling album after What's the Story Morning Glory. Oasis were going through a very different and difficult crisis. Noel Gallagher was going through drug addiction and as well as anxiety attacks, and as well as Liam Gallagher, who would later on file for divorce from Patsy Kensett after he cheated on her with three different women. Standing on the Shoulder of Giants was totally the opposite of what the usual Oasis sound was like, this is into a more modern direction of psychedelic influences. This is also the first album that Bonehead and Gwigsy are not involved because both of them had left the band. Also, this is the first not to be produced by Owen Morris. Mark Spike Stent became the producer for this album. The first Oasis album to be released through the now-founded label Big Brother Recordings Limited. The album released four singles, Go Let It Out on the 7th of February, Where Did It All Go Wrong, which is a non-UK single, Who Feels Love on the 17th of April, and Sunday Morning Call on the 3rd of July. Upon its release, the album did receive very mixed reviews. Some say that it is one of the weakest, if not the weakest, Oasis album, and despite that, the album went to number one in the UK and Scottish album charts. The band went on tour heavily, and this is also the first to feature Andy Bell and Gem Archer for the touring process, especially when they were documented and recorded on their iconic show for their live album, Familiar to Millions, at Wembley Stadium. Standing on the Shoulder of Giants is, to me one of these later Oasis albums where I personally find it to be absolutely one of the most overlooked, if not, to me, the most overlooked album in the Oasis discography. And as much as I have been a big fan of the first two albums of Definitely Maybe and What's the Story Morning Glory and even really liking Be Here Now, Standing on the Shoulder of Giants has been absolutely divided from then to today and I am very curious for any Oasis fan to say what they personally think about this album and to some credit I will still give Noel Gallagher a lot of the credit for making things into a different direction whereas with Be Here Now that was like the most bombastic sounding record and a beginning into what would later on Oasis become after the very acclaimed records of the first two albums? So the album's production, done by Mark Spite Stent, who also worked with others including Depeche Mode, Björk, U2, Massive Attack, etc. I really, really appreciate his style of production on this album. And while it is not as uh, very much like a popular type of production style like what Owen Morris had done on the earlier Oasis albums, I really think that Mark's production style has a different style. And that's what I do like very much about this album. And when you really compare it to the production on Be Here Now, to me, one of the worst overproduced rock albums ever, this was a massive, refreshing, warm sound that I appreciate. And this was just a very comfortable listening experience than what I was trying to hear 
with the original production on Be Here Now. The first song on the album is the instrumental slash sampled intro of Fucking in the Bushes. And as much as I love Rock and Roll Star to Hello and You Know What I Mean, I still love Fucking in the Bushes. That really loud, crashing, booming, bashful drum beat on a continuous loop. And the simplified opening guitar lick that remains consistent on and on and on and on. It's very memorable. And the additional lead guitar work was done by Paul Stacey, who would later on become a member for a bit of Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds band, and as well as with the Black Crows, when Do You Know What I Mean was all over the place and so dramatic with orchestra and different guitar effects. Fucking In The Bushes is an amazing opening song, and the samples as well were just as perfect, including that very popular rant from the opening lines of this track, uh, which was an audio track of a rant taken from the Isle of Wight Festival 1970, and even the backing vocals from P.P. P. Arnold and Linda Lewis, their harmonies on their notes were just so, so good, making it like a loud and brilliant sound to open the album. Then the single Go Let It Out pops up after the opening track, and this is my personal favourite song on this album, and I absolutely love it. It is one of my top 10 Oasis songs of all time, and it does have the drumming sample of Johnny Jenkins' version of I Walk on Gilded Splinters, and this is an attempt, according to Noel Gallagher, at like a modern-day Beatles, but the structure to this one is really strong, and I love the vocal melody that Liam does. Even the sounds onto the Mellotron and that excellent bass line into the verse sections. The bridge section is fantastic as well. I always do adore this song, and, uh, you know, it is one of these songs that is definitely overlooked, just like with many other classic tracks from the Master Plan compilation. Who Feels Love? This is a long, psychedelic, droning type of ambience feel about it, and it is trippy as all heck throughout the continuation of the song, and I think this is a beautiful number. The harmonies from both Liam and Noel together into this percussive and mellow sound was really smooth to hear, and while I really appreciate this one just as much as Go Let It Out, Who Feels Love is warm, it has such a, a vibrant feel to it. I really do love this one pretty much just as highly as the first two opening songs on the record. Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is is a bit of a weird one for some people, and it's just a continuing uh, loop with barely any progression, again with these dominating, assaulting crashes onto the drums and with Liam's voice. And I think that his voice on this album and onwards, it was at a different vocal tone, but I actually quite like it. While he was going through quite a lot of the alcoholism at this time, Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is is... A song where some Oasis fans will say it is one of their weakest tracks or absolutely filler. Not one of the strongest numbers on the album, but I appreciate it. And it does go on for like more than four minutes on these very buzzy, noisily affected uh, keyboard synthesizer sounds while the madness of the drum sounds just goes on all over the place. But I didn't really mind this song. Little James is one of the most controversial numbers on this album. And this was one of the very first, if not the first song, Liam Gallagher decided to write. And it's basically a love song while he was going through his relationship with Patsy Kensett and her son. I don't give a shit what anyone thinks about this. And just because it's all lovey and you know, sugary sweet. I absolutely see this one as one of my favourites on this album. It's just the simplicity of it, onto the pianos and also the whole calmness that it has. And I really think that this is 
one of the best numbers on this record. Now onto the personal struggles about Noel's addiction and Valium as he was going through the heavy anxiety. Gas Panic is such a mad paranoid type of number and this is I think some of the darkest compositions that Noel Gallagher has ever written and it is as I say paranoid it does deliver extremely well and this does have Paul Stacey once again onto the uh, more uh, prominent sounds of his work but he does some more stuff with Noel on Gas Panic and I think this is an excellent number too. This does feature Mark Feltham from Nine Below Zero on the harmonica on this one, as well as hearing the sounds of Mellotron and the Mini Moog and Charlotte Glasson on flute. But I find that this is just as experimental, like on Who Feels Love, in a very uh, dark and desperate type of way. And even when Oasis play this live, this is a masterpiece of a number. So... Despite what Noel went through, I think he bravely portrays it so well into a song like Gas Panic. Where did it all go wrong? This is lyrically uh, about the circle of friends that he was uh, involved with. And uh, I will have to say that this is a vulnerable ballad. And uh, as much as I love Don't Look Back in Anger to Talk Tonight and The Master Plan, I think Where Did It All Go Wrong defines Noel as uh, one of his best in terms of how emotional it sounds and quite I could be wrong about this but I think this is basically about at the time when Gwigsy and Bonehead had left the band and Liam was originally going to sing this song but uh, the melody was shifting all over and he just couldn't get it so it was a dynamic number but I'm actually quite pleased actually, when Noel decides to sing this song, because this is a brilliant song from start to finish. And I think that this is another banger of a track to follow up one of the other highlights on the record. Sunday Morning Call, unfortunately to me, is uh, one of the weakest songs in Oasis discography. And I just don't really care about this track. And um, although it was not confirmed as the song was uh, inspired by Noel's friend Kate Moss or his brother Liam. Uh, I don't know the reason behind this song in the making, but I just don't really think this is one of the best numbers. It's too melodramatic to me. I never really cared for this song, and it does go on a bit too long. So it's a song where I appreciate it for what it is, but uh, this is... Uh, one of the uh, weakest filler numbers on the album, just like with, yeah, put your money where your mouth is, but I could personally do without Sunday Morning Call. I Can See a Liar, this is, uh, along with Fucking in the Bushes and Go Let It Out, the, the most ballsy, uh, rocky attitude type of number. And uh, I think that this is another really good song, and the, the drums sound pretty violent on here. The distorted chords that's blaring out through the speakers do sound very nice and crisp. And there's not many Oasis fans that would really talk about this song so much. But I think that it has a very good rhythm to it and the power that it does make. So I Can See a Liar is one of the songs that I would say has to be uh, documented and talked about even more than just talking about the uh, other classics on this album uh, from the first half. But uh, I think that I Can See a Liar has, uh, as I said, the power, but it's got some really good guitar tones, that straight-to-the-point type of vibe. Then the album concludes things with the track of Roll It Over. And while it is not as a climactic number, like on Champagne Supernova, but uh, I do think Roll It Over, while it is another very slow ballad, I think it comforts things uh, so, so nicely. And Liam's voice on this one sound very, very good. And the overall pacing about this song is what I like. B 
being the longest number at six and a half minutes. So I think that Roll It Over is another one that deserves a lot of the credit. And uh, it has that type of of desperation type of feeling. You know, like when Liam soars his vocals onto the chorus. Uh, just like with these different emotions of these tracks, like on uh, Gas Panic and Where Did It All Go Wrong, etc. But I, I do enjoy Roll It Over very much so that it finishes the album in this uh, comforting way. And then the uh, bonus track from the Japanese release of this album, Let's All Make Believe. I think this is uh, one of my favourite Oasis tracks. And I think it personally uh, sums up the uh, melody just as efficiently like on the other softer tracks on the uh, original track listing of the album. And I just don't see that it's it should have been a bonus track. I wish that this track should have been on the track listing and swap out Sunday Morning Call or Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is and replace one of those songs and put this one in because I think this is a very, very good number. How it ha it has been left off from the uh, original track listing, I have no idea because I think this is a a very nice song. And personally for me, another underrated cut. Overall, I think Standing on the Shoulder of Giants is, to me, one of the most underrated albums, and especially with what Noel Gallagher went through. And I'm actually quite disappointed that he felt very dissatisfied about this album more than a decade after the album's release, because I think that this is an album that this is going to shock and trigger some people, but I think that this is, for me, one of the best Oasis albums and one that I personally will pick as one of my top five and an album that I prefer over Be Here Now. But I'm very curious to know what you think about this album in the comments down below. Do you think that this is the weakest Oasis album or one of your favourites? I don't really know, but I'm very interested to see what you think about this record. I think this is a very well thought of and uh, dedicated record to make something different. And, you know, it's just one of those Oasis albums that I enjoy very, very much. I'm going to give Standing on the Shoulder of Giants by Oasis a 9 out of 10. I know that is astronomically high, but I'm one of these people that does defend this album. And I'm sure some, or maybe many Oasis fans, would do the same thing than just to obviously pick the first two albums. But for later stuff, I think Standing on the Shoulder of Giants was made a way of making music in a, in a separate purpose. But I think that this is a great album, and it's one that I personally love mostly. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.